Last month, I published Flat Earth Fail Compilation 40, and then afterwards I posted a poll on Twitter to see if I should carry on the series. A whopping 71% of you said yes, we should carry on with the series. Only 29% of you couldn't read a question. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. This is Flat Earth Fail Compilation 41. Welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today's video, a massive thank you to the sponsors today, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you like simultaneously. In today's day and age, we all spend a massive amount of time online, six to eight hours a day for some of you. The internet knows a hell of a lot about us, and that's why we should care about our online data. Use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel so that no one can see it without your permission which is great for protecting things like your ID. ID theft is an increasingly common and scary crime. Use Surfshark and its HackLock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. HackLock scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so that they can take action. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use my code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. Right, back to the Lays Flat Earth Flail compilation, episode 41 no less, and we start with the legend that is CC, Chris from New York, Westchester County. Away we go. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's um, 10 16 22. You know, I bought that camera um, for my own interest because, I mean, I know everything is flat and I, I know we live on a flat plane, I know we're covered with a dome and um, everything up there, it's just an amazing light show. Of which you have no explanation and or evidence for. But you know, when you actually see it for yourself, you know, and, and you see stars and uh, these fake planets um, that are supposedly trillions and trillions of light years away. And nope, not trillions of light years away. That would currently be impossible. These planets are a couple hundred thousand miles away or whatever it may be. Wrong again. The closest a planet will ever get to us is 54.6 million kilometers, and that would be Mars. Um, it like sinks in, you know, and it speaks to you. Um, you see, us flat earthers know there's a God. Well, not all of you do. Most of you believe, not know, I agree with that, but not all of you. That's right. God has created all of this. God created your kitchen. I feel like if God was real, he'd sort of do a better job. I mean, that microwave looks tired at best. God has created you. God has created what you're walking on right now. God created my carpet. Again, I feel like he could have done a better job. Okay, and that's what they're hiding from you because they don't want you to know that. That there is a higher up that created everything. Everything? So I guess murder, AIDS, cancer, hurricanes, famine and war are included in that everything, right? Thanks God. They created all of this. And that is the ultimate goal, to keep it a secret, to make you think you live on some accident that you're um, insignificant. I don't think anyone is insignificant. We are all rare, special and unique, all of us. And you have no hope. As an atheist, I'm actually full of the stuff. But you're far more 
than what you think you are. You gotta think about it. Think about when I can get so much, but I mean, you know, when you really, really want something, all of a sudden it magically appears. 1965 Shelby Mustang GT 350R. Ah, balls. Right? Something small, like a parking spot or a meter you're pulling up to all of a sudden has change in it. Ah, I went too big too quickly. Okay, okay. Oat milk cappuccino, one shot, no chocolate sprinkles. Oh, for fuck. There it is, time. Little things like that. So you are capable of a lot more than you think. Totally agree. I mean, I ran 96 kilometers in three days in Fuerteventura. Link is in the description. But everybody else wants you to make you think you're incapable of doing anything. But be a slave. So don't be a slave. Wake up. Wake up. Find yourself. Figure out what you live on. The thing is, Chris, no one really cares about that. They will get on with their lives after laughing hysterically at flat earthers and then getting on with their day. And understand what we live on. A flat earth. There is no space. There are no stars out there. There's nothing that's going to kill you. No meteors. Nothing. The only thing that controls you are the people that are taking your money from your pocket. The lady in the corp is controlling me. I only wanted a peppered steak slice. As a slave, that's what controls you. I think if you're something, I think if you're on my videos, they would be a part of your life. No, thank you, Chris, for another gem. Right, moving on, it's our Flat Earth Fail compilation favorite Mr. Level Earth Observer. He is looking at the lunar lander. Away we go. We have a quick look at the technology and the build quality of that technology that supposedly got man to walk on the moon back in 1969. Link in the description to the full video which we're about to view. All I'm looking at is a small segment. If you want to see the rest of the video, like I say, link in the description. What we're about to see is some close-ups of the lunar lander, where we get to see its build quality and the technology used in all its glory here to supposedly get man to walk on the moon. So let's have a look. And just this shot here looks like a kid's art project. Terrible. It doesn't matter what it looks like, honestly. That's not evidence, that's conjecture at best. I could do better myself blindfolded, having consumed a bag of wild mushrooms and not having a clue where I was or what I was doing. I could still knock something up better than this tosh. No, you really couldn't, Elio. I doubt you could without any of those things. In fact, I know you couldn't. This supposedly got man in a harsh environment to land on a spherical rock, apparently, whilst doing ludicrous speeds. Land on that rock. Also, whilst this build quality, this technology, was separating the vacuum of space from an air pressure system. Let's have a look at how pressurized it was, shall we? The pressure in the lunar lander was about four PSI. Atmospheric pressure at ground level, by the way, is 14.7 PSI. So not really that pressurized, is it, level Earth observer? Bearing in mind, NASA's vacuum chamber, the largest on Earth, required six to eight feet thick concrete walls to separate an air pressure system from a vacuum. Yes, but that's the other way around, isn't it? A vacuum within a pressurised atmosphere, not a pressurised atmosphere within a vacuum. And yet we're expected to believe this art project did the same job, got men to travel and land on objects supposedly a quarter of a million miles away in ridiculously harsh environment, and yet we see this. But surely if they were faking it, they would produce photos of something that you moon landing deniers would actually believe, wouldn't they? It's essentially sticky tape, parchment paper, tin foil. 
and just lots of imagination. No, the Lunar Lander was mostly made from heat treated 2219 and 7075 aluminium alloys, along with multi-layer blankets of aluminized plastic. My bad, I'm forgetting the curtain rods. Curtain rods, sticky tape, parchment paper, tin foil. And, and this is classed as evidence. This is technology stroke the build quality of amazing technology, which supposedly got man to land on the moon. And look at the fucking state of it. No need to be rude. The lunar lander needed to be as light as it possibly could. You sort of forget about aesthetics when that is your goal. If I built something like that on site, I'd get kicked off the job and told to do one. You couldn't build something like this, Level Earth Observer. There must have been some incredibly powerful drugs around in the late 60s to distract and hope that people would believe in this absurdity that is the moon landing, which is a charade. I mean, look at the build quality of that. Buckle panels, curtain rods, duct tape, tin foil parchment paper. It's just a prop, an art project. Just like all the old school space stuff was, either models in dark rooms or art projects, like props like this. Great stories, a bit of space pantomime, and a firework display, and away you go. You got your moon landing. It's ridiculous. No wonder you had things like Woodstock going on in the late 60s, the massive distraction of the Vietnam War, and of course this is well chucked in. All the social issues going on in America mid 60s. All of course a great distraction. Drugs being put into communities to separate and break up the communities that strangely started coming into America when the Vietnam War started. You don't get out much, do you, matey? And of course you've got this moon landing charade. Again, people still believe this tosh to this day and get bloody sensitive about it as well. But look at it. Buckled panels. Wait, a failed art project. A terrible space prop. Thunderbird's build quality was far superior to this. And yet we're expected to believe man travelled in this, in a harsh environment, landed on a rock, had a vacuum separated from the air pressure system by this technology, this build quality. Have a word. Let me correct you, Elio. Two men, not one. Let's say it all together, everyone. Personal incredulity. Moving on, our next video comes from a channel called Church on Fire Ministry, who has some proof apparently that the solar system is a lie. Let's take a look. I've got Mercury represented in this first orbit, and it supposedly orbits uh, somewhere around 43 million miles at its maximum. And then you have Venus over here at 67 mi uh, million miles in the uh, second orbit from the sun. And of course we've got the blue marble. We've got Earth up here in the third orbit, uh, going around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour, supposedly at, at a distance of 93 million miles from the sun. Okay, and in the meantime, we're spinning around here, okay? Um, and uh, right now, the reason I got the light, I just wanted to cast a strong enough shadow. So you see, this would be daytime on this side, and it's nighttime on this side, the dark side. No problem so far. I wonder what his issue will be. Okay, so I get thinking, we are out here looking this way. We're looking out that way. We want to knock the Earth out of its orbit. But we are looking this direction, toward the darkness in our sky. That's not strictly true. Those in the far northern hemisphere and the far southern hemisphere are actually looking at a different part of the celestial sphere as those nearer the equator. Okay, now the question is, why can I see Venus at all? If Venus is rotating down here in its second orbit, we're in the third orbit, but we are facing away from Venus right now, how come I can see it in the sky? I mean, it might be up here, wherever, but it's still maintaining this circular uh, distance in here, inside the orbit, on the inside orbit between Earth and Sun. So why am I able to see Venus on the dark side of Earth right now? It would have to be out here to, be, to enable it to be seen. It'd have to be catching the light from the Sun and, and being able to be seen here. If it's where we are told it is located, we would not be able to see it in our night sky right now. Well, you see, yes, we would, because we don't really see it in the night sky. We see it either shortly after dusk or shortly before dawn. And even then, it depends on where Venus is in its orbit. You see, Venus is in an inferior orbit. 
Now that means we see it at best at either greatest eastern or western elongation, and even then it's only ever near the horizon. The evidence gets even better though, when you, from Earth we always see Venus in phase because some of it is not illuminated by the sun. So yeah, pretty easy one there. So our final video today then, moving on, comes from a Terry R. Iker. You should all know him from the channel Flat Out Truth. And he is talking about a grand illusion? Let's take a look. Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, just wanted to make a really short video on a question that I get asked a lot by uh, Globe Earthers. Uh, and that question goes like this. If the Earth is flat, then why are all the planets and the sun and the moon a sphere? A very decent question, I think. And as you can see here, how they make the silly little meme showing a flat Earth with everything else round. Well, it's really, really simple. That often means too simple. You believe that everything in the sky is a sphere because that's what you've been told on TV. And when you look at it through a telescope, it does look like a sphere, but you can't reach up there and touch it. You don't know if it's a sphere or not. You're assuming that something thousands of miles away is a sphere to be, because this is what they showed you right here. This is what they show you. When you look up the planets and the earth, look at them, they're all the same size. <laughs> well, they aren't the same size in my telescope and they do look like spheres through that, unless you want to say that my eyes are wrong. But anyways, here's my point. Here's the cartoon images they give you. You think in your mind that they're all a sphere because that's what they show you on TV. Here's the sun. Computer generated an image by NASA. Look at it. Of course, it looks like a sphere, right? But is it? Hmm. Here's the moon. Looks like a sphere, doesn't it? Hmm. But is it? Yes, because I see the exact same thing as they do. Now let's take a closer look. Now they tell us that the sun reflects off the moon and lights the whole moon up, but check out what happens when we shine a light on a ball. It doesn't cover the whole ball, it only puts a speck of light on it. Now, that is all to do with how the light reflects off the regolith on the moon's surface. It's diffuse re reflection, not specular. Now check this out. Now these look like four planets out in outer space, right? According to what you've been shown on TV. They all look like four spheres out in outer space, right? but it's just an optical illusion. So here's my answer to all you Globers who say, well, if the Earth is flat, why is everything else in the sky a sphere? Well, how do you know it's a sphere? Let's see if it's a sphere. Hmm, well, that's not a sphere. No, it's a half sphere, equals not flat. But from three inches away on your phone or whatever you're watching this through, it looked like a sphere at first, didn't it? Now let's check out the next one. Is it a sphere? Hmm, let's look and see. Imagine that, a flat disc, huh? Yes, you can make a flat picture look 3D. No one disputes that. But that doesn't mean that all the planets are flat, does it? And you think that just because you can see something that's thousands of miles away, that it's a sphere, when you can't even determine which one of these four Objects is a sphere three inches in front of your eyes, and you think you can tell the difference from thousands of miles away? Another hemisphere, still not flat. It's time to wake up. It's an optical illusion. You've been lied to, people. Wake up. Is there any other two-word combo more said by flat earthers than that one? They think that saying it makes them automatically correct. No, it makes you look silly and quite frankly unoriginal. Well, there we go, another fantastic Flat Earth Bell compilation there, and thank you so much for voting for it to continue. But for today, we are all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for watching, it truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, smash that like button. I've said smash that like button again. Please consider subscribing as well, it'd be truly appreciated, and of course, share the video too if the feeling takes you. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today. Uh, remember, visit surfshark.deals slash simandan uh, and use the code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday for the return of Huff Paranormal. See you then. <laughs>